The Boy Who Cried Wolf Once upon a time, there lived a shepherd boy who watched the sheep of the villagers. One day, when he was sitting at the hillside taking care of the sheep, he got very bored. It was lonely for him, so he devised a plan to get a little company. He took a deep breath and started shouting, Wolf! Wolf! The wolf is chasing the sheep! He shouted. Wolf! Wolf! The wolf is chasing the sheep! He shouted wolf. again. He wolf. shouted again and again and again. The, the villagers stopped what they were doing and rushed to help the boy. But when they arrived at the hill, they found no wolf. Where's the wolf? asked the villagers. The boy laughed at the sight of their angry faces. I fooled all of you! He laughed at the villagers. Don't cry wolf when there's no wolf, said the villagers. Then they went grumbling back down the hill. The next day, he shouted again. Wolf! Wolf! The wolf is chasing the sheep! The villagers stopped wolf, what they were doing wolf, and rushed to help the boy. The he laughed as he saw villagers running up the hill again to save his sheep. He shouted again. He shouted again and again and again. When the villagers arrived, they found no wolf and they got angry. Didn't we tell you not to shout wolf when there's no wolf? said the villagers. But the boy just grinned and watched them go back once again. The next day, when the boy was watching the sheep, there came a real wolf attacking his sheep. Alarmed, he leaped on his feet and started shouting, Wolf! The wolf is attacking my sheep! Please help! But the villagers thought the boy was trying to fool them again, so they continued with their work. When it was about to get dark, the villagers wondered why the shepherd hadn't returned. They went up the hill searching for the boy. They found the boy sitting alone and weeping. There really was a wolf here, said the boy. I cried for help. Why didn't you come? One of the villagers sat next to the boy and told him, Nobody believes a liar, even when he is telling the truth. The boy learned his mistake, and he never lied to anyone in his life again. The Frog and the Ox One day, a little frog came hopping up to a big frog, who was sitting by the pond. The little frog looked really excited. What happened? asked the big frog. Oh, father, I have seen the biggest frog in the world, said the little frog. It was as big as a mountain. It had horns on its head, a long tail, and its nose was divided into two. Ha, said the big frog. Tush, child, tush. You must have seen the farmer's ox. But the big frog wasn't willing to accept that the ox was greater than him. So he said, But I don't think it's bigger than me. He may be a little taller than me, but you see, I can easily make myself as big as he is. Huh? Can you show me? Asked the little frog. Hmm, said the big frog. Was he as big as this? As he puffed himself up. Oh, much bigger than that, said the little frog. Then the big frog puffed himself up again and asked, Was he this big? Much, much bigger than you. Again, the big frog blew himself out and asked the young one if the ox was as big as that. Bigger, father, bigger, was the reply. Ridiculous, said the big frog, who thought he was much more important than he actually was. Wait, and I'll show you. I'm the oldest frog in this pond, and the biggest, too. So the big frog took a deep breath 
and blew and blew and blew and swelled and swelled and swelled. Stop it, father, said the little frog. I think you're going to hurt yourself. But pride overtook the big frog and he kept blowing himself out. He puffed and puffed himself so much and he finally burst. Boom! The big frog had lost his life just because he wasn't ready to let go of his pride. The Story of a Raven and a Swan Once upon a time there lived a raven who was as black as coal. He was very envious of the swan because her feathers were as white as snow. The raven one day got an idea. He thought he too would become like swan if he lived like a swan. The foolish bird planned to swim and dive in the water all day long. He decided that he would even eat the plants that grow in the water. So he left his home in the woods and flew down to live on the lakes. But though he washed and washed himself all day long, his feathers remained as black as ever. He almost got drowned by the end of the day. <laughs> the stupid bird then ate the water weeds, but the food didn't agree with him. So he got thinner and thinner as days went. And one day, he died. So the moral here is, a change of habits will not alter nature. The Tortoise and the Ducks The tortoise, you know, carries his house on his back. No matter how hard he tries, he cannot leave home. They say that Jupiter punished him so. Because he was such a lazy stay-at-home, that he would not go to Jupiter's wedding, even when especially invited. After many years, Tortoise began to wish he had gone to that wedding. When he saw how gaily the birds flew about and how the hare and the chipmunk and all the other animals ran nimbly by, always eager to see everything there was to be seen, the tortoise felt very sad and discontented. He wanted to see the world too. And there he was with a house on his back and little short legs that could hardly drag him along. One day, he met a pair of ducks and told them all his trouble. We can help you to see the world, said the ducks. Take hold of this stick with your teeth and we will carry you far up in the air where you can see the whole countryside. But remember, you should keep quiet or you will be sorry. The tortoise was very glad indeed. He seized the stick firmly with his teeth the two ducks took hold of it, one at each end, and away they sailed up toward the clouds. Just then a crow flew by. He was very much astonished at the strange sight and cried, This must surely be the king of tortoises. Why, certainly, began the tortoise. But as he opened his mouth to say these foolish words, he lost his hold on the stick, and down he fell to the ground where he fell among rocks. Foolish curiosity and vanity 
often lead to misfortune. The Fox and the Monkey Once upon a time, the animals in a forest decided to elect a new ruler. At the meeting of the animals, the monkey who was present there was asked to dance. This he did so well with a thousand funny capers and grimaces. The animals were carried entirely off their feet with enthusiasm. And then and there, elected him their king. The fox did not vote for the monkey and was much disgusted with the animals for electing so unworthy a ruler. One day, he found a trap with a bit of meat in it. The fox then got an idea. Hurrying to King Monkey, he told him he had found a rich treasure, which he had not touched because it belonged by right to His Majesty the Monkey. The greedy monkey followed the fox to the trap. As soon as he saw the meat, he grasped eagerly for it only to find himself held fast in the trap. The fox stood off and laughed. You pretend to be our king, he said, and you cannot even take care of yourself. The animals realized that a true leader proves himself by his qualities. Soon another election among the animals was held and they appointed the lion as their king. The Miller, His Son, and the Ass One day, a long time ago, an old miller and his son were on their way to market with an ass which they hoped to sell. They drove him very slowly, for they thought they would have a better chance to sell him if they kept him in good condition. As they walked along the highway, some travelers laughed loudly at them. What foolishness, cried one, to walk when they might as well ride the donkey. The miller did not like to be laughed at, so he told his son to climb up and ride. They had gone a little farther along the road when three merchants passed by. Oh ho, what have we here? They said to the boy. Respect old age, young man. Get down and let the old man ride. Though the miller was not tired, he made the boy get down and climbed up himself to ride, just to please the merchants. At the next turnstile, they overtook some women carrying market baskets loaded with vegetables and other things to sell. Look at the old fool, exclaimed one of them, perched on the ass while that poor boy has to walk. The miller felt a bit vexed, but to be agreeable, he told the boy to climb up behind him. They had no sooner started out again than a loud shout went up from another company of people on the road. What a crime, cried one, to load up a poor dumb beast like that. They look more able to carry the poor creature than he to carry them. They must be on their way to sell the poor thing's hide, said another. The miller and his son quickly scrambled down, and a short time later, the marketplace was thrown into an uproar as the two came along, carrying the donkey slung from a pole. A great crowd of people ran out to get a closer look at the strange sight. The ass did not dislike being carried, but so many people came up to point at him and laugh and shout that he began to kick and bray, 
And then, just as they were crossing a bridge, the ropes that held him gave way, and down he tumbled into the river. The poor miller now set out sadly for home. By trying to please everybody, he had pleased nobody and lost his ass besides. <laughs> Hi friends! Did you have a lot of fun with the videos? Do you want more? Subscribe to our channel to have more fun with me! Click here to continue watching more such beautiful sing-song rhymes!